Give Sister Abigail a great big hand as she comes. Amen. Missionary to Talon. And I'm looking to orange Mike somewhere. Who's got orange? You got it. She's Thank got you. it. Hallelujah. We in good. So as she speaks, as the Lord speaks to you, just bring your offering, write your check out to Westmoreland, and uh, expect a blessing from God. Amen. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I'm so thankful that the spirit is strong and that he is still flowing. But before I keep going, is it okay to pray one more time? I like to start out praying and to start out with that covering. So if you would, just bow your heads and pray with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you this morning for bringing us all here together, God, for bringing us here to worship you, to put you on high, God. It is all about you, Lord. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's about you. And I pray, Lord, that every word that I utter that comes out of my mouth from here on, Lord, will honor you, will be your words, will glorify you, God. I pray that the Holy Spirit it will speak through me, Lord. I pray that you help every ear to hear you, God. I pray that every heart will be turned to you, Lord. I pray, God, that you continue to speak through me and just to use me, Lord. I thank you and I put you on praise, God, in your holy name. Amen. Thank you. So my name is Abigail Bishop and I'm from Rocky Mount, North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, not too far. <laughs> And I actually live in Edgecombe County, so not too far from here at all, probably about 20 minutes. So I'm so thankful that I get to be with you all and to meet you all, some of you I know. And I'm so thankful just to be with my family. I always tell you when I come to churches, I'm so excited to meet my new family, to meet the kingdom of God, to meet my family that I'll be with in heaven for eternity, to meet you and to talk with you, to commune with you. I just have a joy with it, and I love it. And when I go overseas, I get to meet more of my family, and I get to introduce them to you. <laughs> so that's exciting for me. But I was called to be a missionary when I was in middle school. And it's funny because I always remember the moment that my heart shifted that my heart was pulled to go overseas and to work with children and to work with the hungry people. And I don't mean literally hungry, but I didn't, rem I didn't know that at the moment. But I remember I was watching TV before school one morning in middle school, and I remember there was a commercial on that TV about feeding children who are hungry, you know, giving a penny a day, something to that. And I remember thinking, well, why can't I just go there myself? I said, I want to go there and help those children. <laughs> I want to go there and do that. And I remember thinking like, wow, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go overseas, and I'm going to work with children, and I'm going to work overseas. And I remember that just started growing in my heart, even from that young age. I remember when missionaries would come to my church, I would be so excited to learn what they were doing. And so I started to go that route, go that path that God had called me to. And I remember learning later, it wasn't necessarily a physical hunger that I was feeding. It was a spiritual hunger. People who are hungry for the word of God, people who are thirsty for that living water. And to know from previous trips, from previous testimonies that I get to go there, that I get to go there and feed them that word, to feed them that water and that food is just exciting. And it's thrilling. And I hope that my excitement is shown <laughs> if it's not. But to know that God just pushed me through that. You know, when I was in school, which we we're all, you're about to go back to school as teachers and students, I was a little weird. People thought that I was weird. Why would you want, and at that time, my first trip, I wanted to go to Africa. And they thought that was so strange. Why would you want to go to Africa? You could die. You could get kidnapped. You could eat. And I heard it all. And I remember thinking, well, that could happen here. That could happen right here in Rocky Mount. So I remember thinking, like, I would rather spend my life, even if it's only for a short time, overseas doing what God's called me to do than right here and not doing it. <laughs> and so that pushed me. And so I was able to do that in 2016, go on my first mission trip to Rwanda, Africa with the Tigners. And I was able, I went with missionary Rose Boyd. And I remember at the time she told me either two things will happen. Either you'll go there, you like it, buy a t-shirt and leave, or you'll love it and never want to leave. And I didn't quite understand what she meant. Like, of course I'm gonna like it. Why wouldn't I? You know, it's what I'd like to do. But I remember the moment I stepped off that plane. It felt different. 
the Lord showed me like, this is what it is. This is what I have for you. And it wasn't necessarily the place. It wasn't who I was working with. It was what I was doing for God. It was the fact that I was able to teach, and I, this is all giving glory to God. I was able to teach 150 children at one time, and they gathered. I mean, the Lord gathered them. You know, they saw a, a white blonde girl from America. They wanted to hear what she had to say. And so I remember that the missionary prompted me. She said, well, I want you to create your own lesson plan because you're going to do this. You know, you have a translator, but you're going to kind of do this on your own or with God. So I said, okay, you know, I'm going to do it. So I remember like sitting there really leaning into the Holy Spirit, like what can I teach them? Like what can I do? And I remember I was, I cut out puzzle pieces or pieces of paper to let them put together. And I taught them how we all look different. We all sound different, but God has created us in an image, in a way that fits us together, like a puzzle that fits us together. And we're in, when we're in heaven, we're all going to look different, but we're not going to notice that. We're not going to care. We're going to be focused on God, and he's going to use all of those quirks, all of those different personalities together. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't think I could handle 10 Abigails. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> so I know y'all couldn't. So to know that when we're in heaven, there's one, there's going to be one of me and one of you each. But that's how it is on earth. So we get to fit together. And God loves us the same. And he, he's all called us. We are all called to do something for God. And so it's exciting that I was able to teach that and pour that into them and have, have it translated and to see that their eyes just sparkled in a way. And it wasn't me, it was the Holy Spirit. But to know that I was able to be put in that position and that I was willing, it excited me. And I never wanted to leave. I told someone I felt like the, the, the plane ride over was longer than the two weeks that I was there. Like I wanted to be there so much longer. And so I remember going back home and I remember going in that walk. And so I went to Holmes Bible College. And so I was so thrilled because I was like, yeah, I get to, you know, be a missionary, you know, learn about what missionary is, is like. But college was different. Before you go into ministry, you have to learn about God. You have to know who you are in God before you can go and do anything for him. You have to know who God is. You have to know who you are in him. And so I started to, I had to learn how to be in my word, you know, <laughs> students, you have to be in your word when you're in school. <laughs> I did. I will say, and when I was young, when I was in middle school, high school, I was not in my word like I should have been. And there were so many times that I should, like, I wish that I was. I wish that I studied it, that I could have dissected it the way that I am now, the way that I learned in college. But, you know, to all the students, it's not too late. <laughs> you can learn it right now. You can start right now because you you deserve to be equipped. That's what God created us to do is to learn about him, to love him, and to continue to have that desire. And so I remember in college being able to learn that, and I was learning who I was in him. And then after I started learning that, he started using me more in children's ministry, working with outreach ministries. The Spanish church that was partnered with Holmes Memorial, they had church on Sunday nights, but they also had where they taught English to the Hispanics or Latin Americans that were in the area. So while they were learning English, they would bring their children and we would teach their children Bible stories. So we would take all of their children. There would be, I mean, there was probably 25 to 30, which doesn't sound a lot compared to what I said in Africa, but it is when, <laughs> when it's in a church and you're only expecting maybe five. It's a big difference. And so they all gather and we were teaching them. And the amazing thing is, is they wanted to come back. They came back the next night and it kept multiplying. It kept increasing. More students came back, more children at various ages, but they remembered what they were being taught. They remembered. Yes. Teachers, they remember when you teach them and when you're in your classroom, when you're in church, church ministry, student ministry, wherever public schools, and it can be hard, I'm sure, in public schools to put that out there because of the school system, but they remember they remember more of who you are and what you do than sometimes of what the math or science lessons you're teaching. And so just to know that they were coming back, remembering what was being taught, and they were excited. They were so excited. And then they started going to church, at the Spanish church, their parents. Because when you teach children, it doesn't, it doesn't just affect them. It affects their parents. They go home and they tell their children, guess what I learned today? 
and they translate it themselves <laughs> into Spanish to their parents to tell them, this is what I learned. And then they were coming to church and the church started growing. And that's why children's church is so important to me. But also as I was going through college and I remember a little further, probably my senior year, junior year, the Lord put in my heart to nurture, to be a mother. And I didn't understand what that meant. I was nowhere near that, still am not. And so I was very confused. But I remember telling a friend, like, I'm just so ready to be a mom, to, to have a child in that way. And I didn't understand what that meant. But then the amazing thing is, is after that, during COVID or after COVID, I left homes because the school shut down or I was graduating. And then the Lord took me to a new season that I had never imagined. I became a house parent at Falcon Children's Home. So I can say sometimes the Lord will bring it to you before and you may not understand, but there's a reason. And I remember I started out as mother, working with mothers and babies, working with babies. And then I remember the Lord transitioned me to work with teenagers. And children's one thing, teenagers is a little bit different. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but, you know, I was just going out of my teen years. I was in my early 20s. So it was very different for me to teach teenagers how to live life when I'm still learning. But not only was I able to pour into them and affect them, they were able to pour into me and affect me. It shows you just because of the situations they're going through, they can teach me about life. And man, did they. <laughs> but I was able to pour into them to show them that Jesus loves them, that there's a purpose for their lives, there's a purpose for what they went through, and that they, they can still love God because he loves them through it all. And it just excited me that I was able to pour into them, that I was able to do that, and that I was able to do that in that type of figure as a mother or as mom or as parent. And I still had a lot to learn. <laughs> and I was, I remember God even moved me to a different season to work as a um, caregiver in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And I remember um, the Lord just kind of opening doors. You know, I was always called to serve. I remember that my home church wanted me to go and speak, Living Faith Fellowship, wanted me to go and speak at their church before, right when I was getting involved in missions and to share what I was going to do. And I remember thinking like at all of these Big things written out of like what I was going to say. But I remember praying over it. And the Lord said, what did I call you to do? Like, that's all you need to say. And I remember it just popped in my head, serve. He has called me to serve. And I look back at my life and like the Lord has put me in positions to where I can serve. To serve children, to serve teenagers, to serve a woman in her 80s who gave her whole life to serve the church. And it was such an honor to be equipped in that way and to give and to serve. And it just excited me even more and opened the door when I went on different trips. And I'll go into detail about those as well. I was able to learn a love for women's ministries, a love for widows ministry, a love for orphan ministries, a love for people who are hurting and so God just continued to show me different paths that it all doesn't look like one straight line. Sometimes it'll be a little curvy. <laughs> Sometimes he'll show me into children, to women, to elderly women, different ways. But it's all about God and it's all about serving. And that's all I want to do with my life is to serve God in any way possible and to hopefully change lives along that way by being accessible. And so God, while I was at college, he took me to Athens, Greece. And this was different because it wasn't, it was people fleeing from Syria, fleeing from ISIS and all that was going on during that time, just refugees. And we would, we would actually speak in the camps. We would actually go into the refugee camps, but we were the first group ever allowed to go into the refugee camp. And this specific camp was in the Olympic Stadium in Athens, Greece. And I remember, I mean, it was filled with people filled with children, but they told us one of the biggest rules, you can't go and convert them. You can go and play with them, but you can't go and openly preach the gospel to them. And so the, the group over that decided to accept it so that they can get their foot in the door pretty much. So that they, And they're still continuing to be able to do that. And so I remember we went in there and I remember we were playing with all their kids and my professor told me how one of the dads came up to him and he asked him, how much did, you, did they pay you to come and do this? And, you know, my person was kind of confused. What do you mean? And he said, how much did they pay you to come and play with our kids? 
And the professor said, no, they didn't. <laughs> they didn't pay us. We had to raise our own money. We had to save up money. We had to work. We had to do all this, and we paid our own way, pretty much. And <laughs> our professor said his eyes completely changed. He said, you mean you raised up your own money, paid your own way to come here to play with our kids? And he said, yes. <laughs> and that right there is the love of God. That, that showed a love that he had never felt before. That showed a, a day where we came, a, a godly love, to show him and his children, their kids, and to give them a break from the harsh realities, but also to show them that God loves them and that we're willing to fly across the world just to share that love. Sometimes love isn't shown through words, but through actions. Most times it is. So it is through love, through our actions. And so it was exciting to show them that and to be able to be there. And so I told you, God is just always working it out for his good, for his gracious. And it's so amazing just to be able to see that and to be there. But then God, when I was having to do an internship, I remember God put in my heart to work in Asia. And that's where I've always loved Asia. I've always had a heart to go work with the people of Asia to in, any aspect, whether it was Korea, Japan, <laughs> in Thailand, just the culture. I did just when I was in high school, I was intrigued. When I kept growing, I just became more invested in wanting to work with children in that in that continent, in that place. And so I remember, it's kind of funny. I'll be honest. At that time, Japan was probably the least place I wanted to go to. I don't know why. There were just some personal reasons, I guess. But I remember I messaged. A person on Facebook. I knew his name, but I did not know his position. I did not know who he was, but it was Russell Board. And I remember someone said, just message him. So I just messaged him on Facebook and said, hey, I want to do an internship in, in Asia for my school. What can I do? He said, well, why don't you come to Japan for two months and stay with us? I said, well, okay. So then I flew across for the first time by myself to a person I had never met or hardly heard of, only knew by one person his reference. But I knew that the way God was setting it up, it was wonderful. And I'll tell you, I now have a huge love for Japan. I love it because when I went there, God showed me that I am not alone. He is always with me. From the moment that I got off the plane, and I remember I was a little overwhelmed, I'll be honest, because I got on a two-hour bus drive. I've been in Rocky Mount, Wilson, you know, Japan, Tokyo, Japan's a little bit different. <laughs> Their transit system is a little more different. So I remember, and I, I got on a train, and then I remember it took to another train, had to get to another stop, and then we got off and took another bus. And then had to walk about 10 minutes. So I was a little like, okay, like this is a lot. And I remember she, uh, Sandra Bohr looked at me and said, you're gonna do this on your own before you leave. And I said, no, I'm not. I can't do this. This is too much by myself. I can't learn this whole system. And she said, yes, you can, don't worry. You'll be able to do this by no time. And I remember how easy it came, how easy it was to just learn it and to just go. And it wasn't me, it was the Lord. He was just showing me that you are not alone, that no matter where you are, I will always be with you. I will always show you the way. And he does. He did it every time. Even if I felt lost for a second, he would take me to the person who knew English, who could direct me where I'm going. Every single time every time. And I felt a confidence. I felt from the Holy Spirit a comfort that only God can bring. And so I remember like, okay, this is, and now to know that the random person I message is my boss in Asia, but it's exciting to know how God brings those connections together. And so then God is bringing me to Thailand to work with a group of people who are lost, who are searching and who are stuck. And something that we're taught as children who just were raised in rituals raised, I remember I was in Books A Million looking for a book about Thailand. And this book, this one book I found in all the places, I only had pictures. And in every single picture, there were these huge statues. And I mean huge. And everyone had people bowing, giving foods, giving things to them, offerings and all of this stuff. And I just, just to know, like it was so sad because they're giving their whole lives to something that's dead. They can't hear their cry. He can't hear their cries. He can't give them nothing. He can't do anything for them. But still, they're just stuck in those rituals. But then to know that I can go there and show them a God who is alive, who can hear their cries, who can give them what they want. 
you know, to know that they're hungry for something, but they are not being fulfilled. They are not being filled up with anything. So that hunger will stay there. That thirst will stay there until they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And so they are filled with a, a fullness that only can come from God. And so I'm excited to be able to go to them and show them that. It's so exciting to know that God, it's that, to know that it's not about me, to know that it's about God and that all I have to do is be willing. It is so exciting. And so I'm so thankful just to be equipped working with Albert and Jeep Gonzalez's. I'll be able to work under them, to be equipped by them. I'll be able to work with children's ministry. They're also trying to work in nursing home ministries, you know, in women's ministries, to know that all of the aspects that God has brought me through is leading me still into those ministries. And to know that I'll get to go there and be equipped by them who have been there 20 plus years and to learn from them, it's just, it's amazing. And I can't wait. Just, and I will tell you now, I have been released to go to the field. So God is good. He really is. So my goal is to leave. My date, hopefully, is September 18th. But I need your help. They still are asking that I try to raise up some more support, that I try to raise up because they're, they don't want me to have to come back in three years and raise it all back up. You know what I mean? They want me to stay connected, to stay good, so that I can stay flowing through the Holy Spirit. I can stay flowing through what he wants me to do. So I ask there are three things if you would like to be a part of the ministry that God's calling me to do, three ways that you can do that. And the first thing I ask for every person, and the first reason is really why everyone has a card. Hopefully everyone has one. If you don't, I have more in my box, I have more in my car, so I have plenty more. But the first thing that I always pass out these cards, or the first reason, is that you can pray. More than anything you can give, pray. There is power in prayer. There is power in communicating with God. Did you know there's a reason the veil was torn? <laughs> there is a reason that the veil was torn so we can communicate with God. Jesus is our mediator. So let's use that. So I ask that when you do pray, when you have that time, that you pray for me. That you say, hey, Lord, remember this girl. Cover her. Bless her. Give her favor because that's what I need. That's what I need. And then the second thing I ask is if you are able to financially give, to be a supporter, to be a sponsor, whether it's in gifts, whether it's in monthly donations. It, sadly, it does take money. I wish it didn't. I wish it was free. That would be amazing. But it's because of you all that I'm, at, that I'm released right now. It's because of all of the faithful givers and the prayers that I'm able to go there and walk in the calling that God's called me to do. You know, in Romans, it says, how can they hear if we don't go and preach? But how can I go and preach or be sent if people aren't sending me? So I need your help. <laughs> but I need your prayers, your help. And then the third thing I ask is for you to go. You don't have to go into the world, but we talked about, you know, you're going back to school. You're going back to, you're going to work jobs. Even when, even if you're retired, you, know, you can still go out and evangelize. You can go out when you go to the grocery store. How many of you play golf? Does anyone play golf in here? Did you, know, you can talk with your buddies at the golf. You can tell them about Jesus and how good he is. So to just know that there are so many ways and open doors that God can just speak through you. And I can say, it's, in America, it is really hard. It is hard for me to go out to someone in the grocery store and say, hey, did you know Jesus loves you? It sounds easy. But knowing that people are on a route, on a business, ready to go, and they're being rushed. And I told someone, for some reason, people are so angry these days. They are so angry and in a rush. And so I get kind of nervous going up to somebody in America because you just don't know what's on their mind. You don't know what's going on, and you never know what could happen. But I do know God is on my side, and I pray every day for strength and courage. And I'm putting myself out there. I remember telling people, go out, go into stores, just ask somebody did you know Jesus loves you? Or how is your day going today? How can I pray for you? And I remember thinking, well, Lord, I want to do that too. <laughs> so every time I go out, I try to just see if there's anybody that I can just, that the Lord brings me to that needs encouragement, that needs prayers, that I can talk to. I recently, the other, I think on last Wednesday or Tuesday, I flew to Oklahoma to surprise a friend. And on that plane, I remember thinking, Lord, I just want to meet somebody, to be able to talk to somebody. And once again, that's hard because you just don't know who you'll run into at airports or things like that. But I remember thinking, like, that's all I want to do. And I remember on the flight from 
Texas to Oklahoma, I was on a flight with a woman beside me, a young girl, probably my age. And I remember, like, I kind of want to talk to her, but she had her headphones on, which usually for young people, just don't talk to me. I'm, I'm <laughs> doing something. So I, I waited. And by the time we were landing, she started just looked over to me and started talking to me. And she asked me, you know, where are you going? Or what are you up to? Where are you going? And so I started talking to her. And she said, she says, well, where are you, what do you normally do? And I told her I was a missionary going to Thailand and, you know, things like that. And she said, oh, that's amazing. She said, I, I've traveled all over. She's from Jamaica. And she said, and the Lord has been so good to me. She said, when I was in, she stayed in Japan for a while. She said, but sadly, the only ones I could meet were Jehovah Witnesses. So she said, I had to go to their church. She said, I wanted to be surrounded by the word. And she said, by people, she said, so I just went there. I said, well, if you ever back there, I can hook you up with some churches and some pastors that can fill you with the right word. And she was telling me that God has just been so good to her. And, I, and she said that she wasn't even supposed to take that flight. She said she was supposed to take a different flight, but the Lord just put her on this one. And I told her, I said, well, I was praying that I would meet somebody that I could talk to about the Lord. And she said that that's just the way it worked out. It just astounded her. And soon after, we exchanged contact information, and she started messaging me. <laughs> so I met a friend. And so I met a person that I could talk to about the Lord, that I could pray for, that I could do it. And in those simple ways, just shows you that God hears what you want, and he'll use you in the way that he needs you. And so I, she told me, if you're ever overseas, you're ever anywhere, and you need somewhere to stay, just let me know. And I told her the same for her. <laughs> so just to know that God is so good in those ways to make you feel comfortable and remembered. And so I ask you if you would like to be a part of that, that it's so rewarding. It really is. And so he is so good to go out, to be able to talk with people, to be a part of this ministry. But it's not about my ministry. I, I, that's why if you haven't heard, I don't really like to say that because it's God's ministry. It's just what he's called me to do is to serve, just like us all. And so I'm going to pause and let you play a video real quick. And then I'll go into just a short message that ties into what I've been talking about. So go ahead. beautiful to see that there's a work being done overseas, to see that there's a work that's being done because of the people who give, because of you all. You know, a lot of that, the food that you saw was because of donors, because of people giving love offerings. You know, I heard a pastor say that it's exciting because when you get to heaven, you don't know who will come up to you and say, because you gave, that's why I'm here today. Because you gave that care package, I'm here. I was saved. I believed because the perfect timing came. The perfect thing in God came for me. And I believe because you gave, because you sowed that seed. 
And, you know, I believe in that. That excites me to know that even when I give, even when I give, I, I'm a part of something. And so I encourage that. But if you would like to turn me into chap Matthew, Matthew chapter 5. And I want to talk about letting your light shine. Because as I said, when we go overseas, when we go out into the world, there's one thing Christians can never hide, and that's our light. Because God gives us a light that shines bright. And I always, I love it. The, that girl on the plane said, I knew you were a Christian. She said, I felt I could just talk to you because she used the word energy, but it was the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it was the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that's why I said, that's the Lord. <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit. And say, so don't let that light not shine. So I'm going to read Matthew 5, 14 through 16. So I'll start at 14. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lamp stand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Isn't that amazing? I get excited when it talks about not putting it under a basket, but on a lamp. So everyone can see the whole house, the whole world. And so it excites me to know that God gives us a light, that when we accept Jesus Christ, he gives us the Holy Spirit who shines through us. We should never want to hide. When you go into schools, when you go as a teacher, as a student, let that light shine to all the students around you. To, to see that there's something different, that you have a wholeness and a fullness that comes from God. You know, when I think of the light, I remember I'm studying the book of John right now, like dissecting it verse by verse, and that takes a, that's taking a long time. But I know that the, when I think of light, the first person I think of, other than Jesus, is the woman at the well. And I think it just, I remember reading, really dissecting it, and she you knows she came and she, she was on a mission, but not a mission for God. She was on a different mission. And Jesus came and told her everything. And she left that mission that she came. She left that bucket. She came to get water, but she left the bucket because she left full. She left filled with that water. But she went immediately. She went out and told everyone. She went out and said, come meet the man who knew everything about me. She was that light immediately. She didn't say, oh, I forgot. Let me get this bucket. No, she ran. And I was just thinking, Lord, give me that. I want to run for a heat. I want to run and tell everybody. And when she ran, they listened. And, you know, it's amazing to me because I think that before that, they probably already thought she was kind of strange because of the way she was living her lifestyle. But when she ran this time, they listened. They listened to her cries. They saw, like, what is she talking about? Something's different about her. And they went. You know, and I think about me in the other aspect. When I hear, let me go. Let me go to him. And I just remember seeing, like, as Jesus saw them coming, he started talking about the harvest. Talking about, the, it's ripe. He's ready to get them. He's ready, and he's challenging us to go. <laughs> we have to go and tell them. But then when we hear, we have to go and listen. And so it's just amazing what one woman, she ran and did because that light was so bright. Everyone looked to her, and everyone listened, and they were all came to know Jesus. And so I think, Lord, help me to be like that woman, or help me to be like you who can shine bright. But to know that in that instant, she was ready to run. You know, I was when I dissect, I like to read commentaries, and a lot of the commentaries said she left that bucket because she knew she was coming back. She knew that there was a reason. It wasn't for the bucket, though. It was for Jesus. You know, she came to that well broken and hurt and confused, but she left completely different. She left healed. She left with a new purpose. She left on a mission. <laughs> and so to know that he does the same thing for us, he knows everything about us, our bads and our goods, our, all the wrongdoings, but all the good things. And he still died for us. He still completely went to the cross knowing every single thing. And he still said, I choose you. To know that he still chooses us no matter what. He still chose us. Yeah. And that, ex that excites me. <laughs> and so to know that I have a light that I can shine bright. <laughs> you know, that when I think of a light, I think of my mom. 
my mom was a huge light. She shined bright. I remember, which she passed away in May, but I remember that a few months before that, when she was in the hospital in and out, she talked about a little duck that she said one of the nurses came up to her and said, you have such a bright light. And she said, he, he said, you've changed my life. And he gave her a little duck, a little, a little squishy duck. I don't know why or how, but she, she loved that duck so much. And she took it every place she went. And I just remember they were so excited about it. And she, it gave her an opportunity to speak about it. <laughs> it gave her a way to talk to people and to share that light that said, yeah, someone gave me this duck because I shined a light to them. <laughs> and it's just amazing to know that your light shines so bright sometimes, and we don't even know, you know? And it's so beautiful to know that the people around you, the people all around us as a team, that we shine bright. And so I just want to encourage you today that when you, like, when you, go, into the, when you go into this world, to just let that light shine bright. Don't hide it. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid, but go out bright. You know, I, I was just at a conference in South Carolina, and the evangelist that was speaking said that sometimes we have to be rollers. We have to roll out so that people can walk. We have to step down and be a servant. But your light shines just as much as that. And I remember she said that sometimes we have to remember it's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's all about God. And I give him all the glory and all the praise because of what he's done for me and brought me out of. It would not be possible without him. I've had people ask me since the passing of my mom, how are you so still joyful? How are you happy? But I tell them that my mom did not bring me joy and happiness. God did through her at times, but God brings me joy that can never be taken away. Happiness and sadness are temporary, but joy is always there always and I will always preach and I will always thank the Lord that through every single moment I had joy you know how many people came up and spoke into me that I'm gonna have a hole for the rest of my life missing because of that and I rebuked that in the name of Jesus I said no Jesus makes me whole <laughs> not my family not anyone else not my friends not my calling Jesus makes me whole and I will praise the Lord all the way to the every day saying that he has made me whole to this day and it won't be gone. <laughs> nothing will take, will break me to pieces, nothing. Jesus makes me whole and he makes you whole. So just know that whatever you're facing right now, it, is not, it cannot take anything over you. It does not have power over you. Only Jesus does. And so we plead that blood. <laughs> So no matter, you know, just because we follow Jesus, we're still going to have hard moments. But to know that he knew that before. I couldn't imagine going through what I did without Jesus. He knew it was going to happen, but I knew that because I have him, I have a joy. I have access to full happiness, to full belief and confidence that he has a plan. Yes, it may be confusing at times, but he, it is always good. And all of his plans are for our good and for his honor and for his grace and so I can trust in him that he knows what's best and so I'm gonna just end with a prayer but I want to end with encouraging you to go out and be that light no matter what's going on in your day-to-day -day life because some moments will be hard but don't let that dim dimish or dim your light let it shine brighter so that when people are looking to you when you are having a hard moment they'll see Jesus they look you know people look more when you're going through a hard time than when you're not so when they're looking at you and you're going through something in your life, show them Jesus. Show them that nothing can go against you. And so if you would just bow your heads, I just want to pray over you and to pray over the, the students and the teachers and the works and everyone, the pastor. Everyone needs prayer and a covering, especially in this world. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for your word, Lord. Thank you so much for your grace, for your mercy, your power, God, for your mighty, mighty grace, Lord. Every day, Lord, you wake us up. You put air in our lungs, Lord. You help us to be a light, Lord. You use us, Lord. Even through all that we've done, all the wrongdoings, all of the messes we've made, Lord, you still love us. You still choose us because you have a plan and a purpose, God. And I pray over every person we're in this room, Lord, every person under my voice, Lord, every student that's going back to school, Lord, I plead the blood over their lives, over their school, Lord, your protection, God, because you have a plan. And I pray, Lord, that these students will be lights into the world, that they will stay in their word, they will stay in you, God, because you 
are so good. You are the, the vine, God. And I pray that we could stay in you, God. I pray for every teacher, Lord, as they're going into the school system, Lord, that is so messed up, Lord. But we know, God, that you are greater and that you have a plan. And I pray protection over these teachers, that you still give them outlets to be able to speak your word into your light, Lord, that no matter who tries to shut them down, they will shine brighter because you are mightier. And I pray, Lord, as people are going into work, into the world, Lord, that you give them that light to shine to everyone, Lord, that you bring us into perfect peace, Lord, but into perfect communion with people, God, to share your love and your light, God. I pray, Lord, that you just continue to work, Lord, that you raise up this church, Lord, in numbers financially, Lord, but also spiritually, Lord, that your gifts will start to overflow, God, that people will start to come into this church, Lord, that will be redeemed and set free, God. I pray that you use this church to go into the community, God. I've already heard stories this morning of them going out and praying against what this, what this world is trying to do, God, but you are greater. And I pray, Lord, that you continue to touch every person here, God. And you continue to raise us up to go out into the world, Lord. Give us confidence, boldness, strength, and joy, God, while we're going through this world. Because we know that there is a greater eternal life to come with you, God. And we are, love you. We lift you up, God, because you are mighty. It is all about you, Jesus. It is all about you. I thank you so much, Lord, for this morning and for letting me come here to share my heart with them, Lord, to share my heart with my family, God, with your family, with all of us, Lord. We praise you, we glorify you, Lord, and we lift you up in your holy name, amen. I was thinking about that song while she was speaking, and the Lord brought this old song to me. Let my life be a light to some soul. You know that? You sing it, I'll follow it. <laughs> Let my life be a light Shining out through the night Let me bring struggling souls To the fold Spreading cheer to the sad and the lone Let my life be a light To some souls Stand and sing it if you know it Well, let my life be a light Shining out through the night Let me bring struggling ones many struggling people out there. Thank you, Sister Abigail, for bringing that message to us and the vision that God has placed in your heart. She's going on foreign fields. That's where God has called her to. We have a field here. There's so many people waiting to hear the good news of the gospel. I challenge every one of you to get involved in doing something for the Lord. You said, I don't know how to preach. You don't have to know how to preach. All you got to do is know how to give your testimony. Let my life be a light shining out through the night. Help me bring struggling.
Guide my footsteps aright through the dark stormy night. Give me peace, give me joy, give me love. Hallelujah. Oh, let my life be a light shining out through the night. Help me. Think those old songs there down in me. Listen to this. Give me souls for my hire. Let my light be on fire, shining out to the world as a guide. Help me rescue someone sinking now with no Shall ever abide. Oh, let my life be a light shining out through the night. Help me bring struggling ones to the Great Commission Church.